This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin. I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding true crime videos. I do lifestyle university videos as well. Uh, kind of a bit of everything. So today I'm back, still a little bit ill, but I'm back pushing through with another mystery video. So this is the unsolved murders of two young girls. The names were Elizabeth Collins and Lyric Cook. I can't remember how I stumbled across this case, but I did and it has honestly baffled me and kind of broken my heart a little bit so I kind of thought I'd share it with you guys, see your guys' thoughts on the case. So if you want to hear a little bit about the disappearances of Elizabeth Collins and Lyric Cook then keep on watching and we shall just get started. So Lyric Cook was 10 years old at the time of their disappearance and her cousin was Elizabeth Collins who was 8 years old at the time of their disappearance. The pair both lived quite near each other in a small town called Evansdale in Iowa. On July 13th, 2012, the girls had decided to go out riding their bikes around the neighbourhood. It was a well-known familiar area, they knew pretty much all the residents there, and so they were staying with their grandma at the time. She saw them last heading towards downtown Evansdale at around 12.20pm that day. Evansdale isn't a very large town, it was very close-knit, they were all kind of very familiar with each other, so these two young girls had sort of grown up in this very close environment, knowing virtually all of the residents there and knowing their way around the town like the back of their hands, and so their families had no reason to be apprehensive about them going on bike ride that day because they did it so often. The girls were supposed to arrive home at 2pm that day so this was when their families were kind of waiting for them to return because they were usually on time but when it kind of passed that time and there were no sign of either of the girls the families began getting really worried more that something could have perhaps happened to them like they could have you know fallen off their bikes or they had gotten lost or something but yeah, they were worried. And so, like I said, uh, their grandma had last seen them heading in the direction of downtown Evansdale. So after this time passed, they gave it a little bit of time and then their families decided to head out in this direction in hopes of finding them. I think they were more hoping to just find them sat down somewhere having fun playing and kind of lost track of time rather than expecting the worst. And like I said, Evansdale was a particularly small and familiar town, so it didn't take them long to pretty much search the whole place and realise that there were no sign of either of the young girls. And then at 2.40pm, the girl's grandmother called the local police department and reported the pair as officially missing. At 2.50pm, the girls' family had set out, obviously in hopes of finding them, but they'd also gathered a bunch of the local residents because, like I said, everyone kind of knew each other, everyone knew the girls, and so everyone sort of, when they heard about this or saw this family frantically looking for Lyric and Elizabeth, everyone sort of joined in to help the search. Because so many people came forward in, in like, order to help them with this search, they were able to start piecing together a timeline of where the girls had been that day through sort of people just seeing them about on their journey. And the two girls were last seen on a place called Broven Boulevard and Gilbert Drive at 1pm that day in Evansdale. Gilbert Drive in particular is particularly close to something called the Myers Lake, so it's kind of like their local big lake. And as you can imagine with these sort of cases, the lake is kind of the first port of call for investigators when looking for young missing children because they either could have perhaps fallen in or dropped some sort of like one of their possessions which could ultimately lead to sort of where they are, anything like that. So the lake was also, in terms of investigators' point of view, the first port of call for their investigation. And when they had this eyewitness come forward and say that they'd seen the girls on Gilbert Drive earlier that day, obviously they had more reason to search the lake. So yeah, they partially drained the lake in hopes of finding either the girls, which is worst case scenario obviously, or perhaps one of their belongings, maybe their bikes or someone's backpack or something, uh, but they found nothing. The search team grew very, very quickly. So this was all in the same day, bearing in mind, because obviously, as I'm sure you know, in missing children's cases, first sort of early hours in the investigation are the most crucial for finding information or for finding them themselves. So it grew very quickly and the FBI actually eventually 
got involved. There were dive teams, trial dogs, cadaver dogs, there were everything in hopes of searching the whole of Evansdale in particular, this sort of uh, woodland area around Myers Lake because like I said this was where they were last seen. A little while into the search a team of local firefighters actually came across what would later be determined as the possessions of Lyric and Elizabeth. So they'd not only come across the girls' bikes but some of um, Elizabeth's belongings that she'd taken with her that day and they were found sort of on the outskirts of Myers Lake. So it was on a bike trail leading up and away from Myers Lake they'd found these belongings. And as you can imagine, the discovery of these bikes and their possessions turned the mood of the investigation to something very more, much more sinister because at this current point it pointed towards the girls having faced some sort of danger since they wouldn't have left all of their possessions and their bikes, which was obviously their mode of transport. So like I said just before, the first early hours of a missing person's investigation is obviously the most crucial and so when they discovered all of their possessions and like I said their mode of transport, investigators suddenly were on a very very strict time zone. Investigators were on a very strict time limit at this point because obviously all signs pointed towards a third party having some involvement. Local residents immediately began pinning up posters of the girls in hopes of sort of one of the residents that they hadn't managed to reach earlier on in the search coming forward and potentially seeing something that could be of vital use in the investigation or at least in building the timeline. Perhaps if someone had seen the girls maybe bump into another person or walking along with another person However, sadly, the search for Elizabeth and Lyric would turn up no new leads or no new information for another five months. And then on the 5th of December 2012, sadly everyone's worst nightmares came true when some hunters walking through a when some hunters walking through a wildlife park in Braemar County came across the bodies of two young girls. The bodies were later confirmed to be that of Elizabeth and Lyric and their bodies have been found around 25 miles away from Myers Lake which is also where their belongings were found. Investigators did release that the autopsy obviously confirms that the remains were that of Elizabeth and Lyric. However, investigators never released how the girls died, any other details about how they were found, or whether there was any sign of sexual assault, anything. There were no details released. However, it was simply listed that the pair were murdered. On June the 24th, 2013, a new piece of information came forward that could have potentially been vital in the case of discovering who had abducted and murdered Elizabeth and Lyric. Three witnesses had allegedly come forward and claimed to have seen the same vehicle in the same sort of area as the girls on the day that they were last seen. Apparently two of these witnesses had come forward at an earlier point sort of straight away in the investigation but because of the alarming amount of tips that investigators received at that point there weren't any way for them to sort of establish which ones were more helpful if that makes sense. But then the third person actually came forward after sort of the year or so realising that it was actually could potentially be important. Each of the three witnesses claimed to all see a white old large clunky SUV, potentially a Chevrolet or a Ford May, parked on Arbutus Avenue which is a road that directly leads to the bike trail where the girls' items were found. One of the eyewitness testimonies claimed to see the car parked just sort of about 30 feet away from where the possessions were, whereas the other two claimed to have seen it parked just by the bike trail road signs, so very all very close to the girls' possessions, all in the same sort of area. And all three of the eyewitnesses claimed to have seen it around the same sort of time frame, so they all seemed to link up, claiming that they'd each seen the car between half 11 and half 12 on that day. Investigators were able to determine that it was extremely likely that the perpetrator would have been familiar with the area because they would have known that it was secluded enough for him to be able to abduct these girls and take them elsewhere without anyone spotting them. Now there is a case that I'm going to very briefly cover now that is very similar in a lot of ways to the murders of Lyric and Elizabeth that a lot of people have since speculated that perhaps they were carried out by the same person because they are very similar. This case involves the murders of two young girls, their names were Abigail Williams who was 13 and Liberty German who was 14. This case took place just a few months before Lyrics and Elizabeth's in February of 2012. It's considered quite similar to this case as the pair had been on a bridge, they had been kind of just playing together, they were obviously young girls, they were just having a laugh and one of them had uh, taken a photo of where they were, so their location, and uploaded it to their Snapchat. When Liberty's dad had arrived at the location to pick them up, 
neither of the girls were to be found. And then the next day, search teams discovered the two young girls' bodies on a trail near the Close Creek. The two separate cases have very, very similar MOs. Um, I'll go through in a second sort of the list of specific details that appear to be very similar in the two sets of cases, but it just seemed to be the perpetrator would prey on a pair of young girls, very vulnerable young girls. Um, it's all very, very strange, really. And what else is strange is just like the murders of Elizabeth and Lyric, investigators kept very, very quiet on the specific details on the murders. Um, they didn't release any of the details, which in itself is quite strange. Obviously, I think maybe loved ones can possibly request for details not to be shared publicly, but it is very strange when they're trying to find a an on-the-loose child murderer really so in both sets of cases we don't know a lot of the details on how they died so while i was looking for information on this case i came across a reddit user who had actually listed they'd taken the time to list all of the similarities so i've got a list of some of the similarities there are quite a lot but i just thought i'd go through them just to sort of get the discussion going really between these two sets of murders first up both took place near hiking trails and in woodland areas both sets of bodies were discovered near streams it appeared as though both sets were abducted on the outskirts of like a woodland area or like a hiking trail and then taken further into the woodland area. Both occurred on the 13th of the month. Iowa and Indiana are very close in location and which this one it might be nothing but I just thought it was kind of interesting to include. Uh, both occurred within a few miles of meatpacking slash slaughter factories which is just kind of a weird, I don't know if it has any relevance whatsoever but it's a very very weird coincidence. Since the initial investigation there have been a number of tips that have kind of trailed in and new leads and things but everything they follow up in relation to either of the cases nothing really has come forward and been solid and the murders of elizabeth collins and lyric cook remain unsolved to this day so that is everything i have on the case this like i say is very interesting and i'm very excited kind of to hear your guys's discussions on this because it's fascinating the similarities between the two cases but also you know the fact that the details haven't been released and there's a lot there really that's quite strange and one thing i do think is particularly strange to think about is that police reckon that the person who abducted lyric and elizabeth was very familiar with evansdale but like i said it was a very small area and so everyone pretty much knew each other so it's very strange to think that if they knew it that well could they have been a local resident that already knew the girls that is a really dark thought but it is obviously a potential lead so let me know your guys' thoughts down below as well as any other cases you want me to discuss i'm working really hard on something at the moment um for the week of halloween so as long as everything goes okay in these next week or so um in terms of filming and stuff i should hopefully be able to sort of start it the week before halloween so we'll see how that goes but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys found this interesting and i'll see you guys soon for another video bye